Okay, hey guys, welcome to my second preliminary outlook for winter of 2014 to 2015. Now, um, a little bit of a um, reminder, this is very preliminary, and um, I've been um, doing long-range forecasts since about August of last year, um, and even before that, I just never posted videos before that. Um, and I've learned um, different oscillations, and that's how you know. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's not a 100% thing, but um, it's the closest guess you're probably going to get if you're looking for a forecast. Um, so here's my temperature forecast. Well above average here in the northwest. Um, above average throughout the um, entire west. Um, slightly above average um, throughout, like, Texas going up into um, North Dakota and parts of Minnesota. Slightly below average through Michigan all the way down into um, eastern Texas. Um, western uh, Louisiana all the way swinging around into like the Massachusetts area is below average, well below average from the very, like New York City all the way down going into New Orleans, extremely below average from Raleigh going into um, Tallahassee all the way down uh, into Miami. Um, there are a few worries I have for this winter though that maybe the East Coast won't be having as great of a winter as some thoughts might advise. Um, as you can see, the most above average uh, precipitation will most likely go out to sea. Um, here, let me give you the storm track real quick. We'll see storms kind of try to just um, stay moderately out to sea. Um, that's because these below average temperatures are making it um, likely the jet stream um, or the colder air will be pushing well over here, the winds, so it's going to be nearly impossible for a storm to come in here uh, closer, but it will happen at times. Uh, don't, don't let me, um, don't get your hopes down to, uh, so fast because a lot of the storms will likely uh, take um, a track like this, and uh, there might be a few perfect storms. Um, we have a few perfect storms every year. Um, but uh, above average precipitation, basically all the way from California up into Maine, really good news. And then well above average from New Orleans uh, going up into like uh, extreme southeast North Carolina um, and taking over most of Florida. So like I said, the storm track will probably take them a little bit out of here. Um, these areas, um, Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey, maybe even New York, can still get on it uh, a lot of the action even when these storms go out to sea uh, whereas Maine uh, Massachusetts and like all these states down here uh, have a lesser chance of getting some more storms for these areas to get snow the only good reason uh, the only good thing about this for these areas is this means that likely a lot of those co that cold air will stay in place which means all snow events for um, a lot of the southeast possible now let's see um, um, what areas we'll be looking at above average snowfall. Um, anywhere in here we'll see a, a well above average snowfall. I know I just said that um, these areas up here likely won't see as many good storms. When the storms do manage to make their way all the way up there, there are going to be some big, big, massive storms. So it's still good enough for them to get two to three inches, maybe even above average. Um, that's precipitation wise. Um, that'll add up to like um, 20 30 inches up here. Um, down here, more like 10 inches, maybe above average, maybe 15 inches. Um, it's it's less significant as you go further south. Um, so a lot of these areas will be looking at 15 inches of snow likely down here because a lot of the averages down here are in the single digits, um, like probably three inches in these areas, six inches in these areas. And then coming up here, we can get into the tens and twelves, but uh, maybe 15 inches for these areas, um, which would be pretty good. Now let's look at the primary um, precipitation type. Over 75% of snow in this blue shaded area. Around 25 to 75% of snow. So the biggest range will be in this mixed zone. Um, and then um, rain, or yeah, under 25% snow um, in these areas. So I think that likely for my local area, Virginia Beach, can be looking at 50% snow uh, precipitation type for this winter which is around the average. Maybe we'll usually average out of 40 to 45% snow, but um, it's looking like when the precipitation does come, it's going to be in the form of snow.
Um, that's why I do think that this, um, this winter does have a good shot uh, for some good uh, snowstorms. I didn't write down all of these because I, um, I forgot for this area, but I'm just going to let you know. Um, I'm going to tell them to you. Um, we're going to be looking at above average, or uh, yeah, above average temperatures for these areas, but still above average snow because temperature doesn't matter for these mountain ranges out here. Um, above average would be still below freezing for these areas, meaning whatever precipitation comes through is still going to give them above average snow. Mostly rains in this green shade. Um, uh, winter battle zone. Um, the winter battle zone will actually come up uh, well into here. Let me get that um, pretty big. It'll, this will be the border, but that doesn't mean that there can't be any big storms. So that's why I still put the highlight as that red shade. That red shade meaning um, possibly uh, large winter storms for, especially, uh, it's going to be especially significant for this general area. Possible heavy snows. Um, I think this is a good shot for like a 2009, 2010, 2010, 2011 situation um, where we could be looking at. I mean, in my area, we got about a 20-inch snowstorm that year, 2010 to 2011. Uh, that's, well, that's like tr uh, quadruple our average in one storm right there. That's significant. And I don't know if they will be that big this year. I do think that there's a good shot for like a 10-inch plus situation, kind of like we had last year, um, nor'easter for the coast. So, um, yep, fingers crossed. Uh, bitter cold but dry and this blue... Uh, Blue range, uh, not a lot of moisture. Uh, what moisture does come will come from the uh, northern jet stream, which would be uh, in the form of Alberta clippers. Warm and dry here. Um, not much to, uh, not many big stories to tell um, this winter for this area, but um, still going to see some snow like always. Mixed threat here going into here. Um, rain, snow, mixed ice. Um, possible ice storms here. Uh, especially in the Oklahoma, um, Texas area, possible, mostly rain in these areas. Um, anyway, uh, really just, we're going to keep watching this situation. If we get those above average precipitation, um, especially for these areas, these areas are still in a shot, even if the storms kind of track like this, um, cause that moisture will still come in. Um, but don't, don't count out, uh, a couple of those storms coming up the coast, uh, like this. And, these areas will be looking at heavy snows possible also if these storms uh, decide to come on shore like this, uh, a lot of those storms. That'll be when we're getting that trough to move into the east and at the same time storms coming in. We might get occasional storms that um, come along the coast. Those will be the ones that actually give these areas rain mainly. Um, but those will uh, definitely give you guys uh, in western Virginia, uh, eastern uh, West Virginia, Western Pennsylvania, um, Central New York, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, you'll get your good snows whenever that happens. But these areas, your storms are likely going to be the ones that don't affect these areas. So don't expect both to happen in one storm very often. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I mean, this, this could be a, a good winter. Um, I don't know if it'll be as cold as last winter. Um, it will be colder in different areas the last winter. That's what I'll say. This area is really what had the cold last year. Really, the southeast is going to be looking at the more below average, but really it's going to, the more colder in general um, for anywhere is going to be here, stuck up here in the northeast because these areas can't get those teens and stuff down here, but we can likely get some of those teens and single digits at night um, in these areas. Um, but yeah, um, like I said, uh, mixed throughout here, throughout this pink zone. Um, then um, possible big storms for the East Coast, like I said before, cold in these zones. I'm kind of just recapping right here, um, warm and dry. Um, but uh, likely the storm track will be... Um, some of these storms... That's probably the worst case scenario, um, this one, for us snow lovers here on the East Coast. Um, then the best case scenario would be
that, um, which there, there, I mean, there could be a handful, I mean, um, uh, two to four of these storms that come directly up the coast isn't actually going off that far. Now, what I want you guys to look for, if we see a lot of those big nor'easters in the fall time, that could be a potential sign that they could continue out th throughout the um, winter if it's looking like fall is going to be related to winter uh, a lot, um, with, like it was last year. We had a lot of nor'easters in the fall time, and then we got even more in the winter. Um, so if we get a lot of nor'easters in that fall time, which I'm forecasting for, that's a good sign that we could be getting some of those nor'easters in the east. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye now.